Well, the title of this message kind of gives it away, but let me ask you a question. Do you say thankful? Do you say thank you? I'm afraid that is a two-word sentence or whatever you want to call it that we don't hear very often anymore. Being thankful for what people do, whether it's something that's really small or whether it's something that's pretty big. You know, we need to learn once again as adults to say thank you as the day goes by. Well, in four days, we will be celebrating Thanksgiving. Folks, we're the most blessed people in all the world. We have an abundance in this country that is unequaled anywhere else in the world. I'm thankful for an awful lot of things. I was thinking about that. Life, health, family, friends, and this country that I live in, despite its flaws. But there's more that I'm thankful for than those things. I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful that Jesus died at Calvary's cross for me. I'm thankful that it's his shed blood that is placed upon my sin to take it away, to purchase it, to redeem it. So I have that all forgiven. And I thank the Lord for that. God gives us so many things. I thank the Lord for this church family, for your faithfulness, for your being here today. Does it seem like 2022 has gone just like that? It sure does, doesn't it? Here we are in the last days of November and December is on its way and this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving. <laughs> One month later comes Christmas. A week after that, New Year's. Where has the time gone? Speaking of time, do you realize that it's important for you to use every moment of your life the way God wants you to use it? We waste so much time doing things and saying things that should not be done or should not be doing. That's just the way it is. This coming Thursday, this will be the 159th time our nation will be celebrating Thanksgiving. Probably that first Thanksgiving was observed in 1621. Any of you there? 1621 when the pilgrims, after a very long, difficult time, came together. They brought their food. They brought their hearts and their voices in thanksgiving. And you know what they did? They praised God. They were thanking God for what had taken place. This was probably the first thanksgiving that's recorded. In 1863, President Lincoln proclaimed thanksgiving as a national holiday. And we're then supposed to gather ourselves together. Guess what he said? In church. He said, gather yourselves in church and gather as families, gather corporately as a nation to express our thanksgiving to God for all his blessings. Count them one by one. I believe Thanksgiving isn't just another holiday, folks, but it's a spiritual duty to give God thanks. 
to let him know that we don't take him for granted, that we are not neglecting him and what he is doing for us all the time. The Bible tells us that we are to be thankful. As a matter of fact, the Old Testament gives us verse after verse after verse that tells us that it is our responsibility, our responsibility to give thanks to him. The New Testament continues on with that theme of thanksgiving. In Psalm 116, verse 17, it's on the screen. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you, capital Y, and call on the name of the Lord. Thursday, many of us will gather together around the table, have turkey or ham or whatever, and boy, we will eat to our delight the finest food that we could ever experience. And I tell you what, we need to understand that that thank offering that's spoken of here is but one kind of offering that the Jewish people had. As a matter of fact, they took the day off when there was a feast or when there was a, an offering that was to be made in the temple. There was a woman, her name was Sarah, and she had a, a parrot called Brutus. The only problem was Brutus cussed a lot. Now you have to remember that Brutus was listening to a human being speaking and it was coming from that person, okay? Just kind of think about that a moment. Now Sarah was going to have her in-laws over for Thanksgiving and she needed to train Brutus not to swear like he did. So just before mother-in-law and father-in-law came, uh, Brutus was still cussing. Sarah had to do something quick, so she decided to put the parrot in the freezer for two minutes to cool him off. <laughs> After a couple of minutes, she opened the door and took the parrot out of the freezer along with a turkey. She asked Brutus, Boy, I hope you've learned your lesson about all that cussing you do. And Brutus, the parrot, took one look at the dead frozen turkey and said, I sure have learned my lesson, but I have one question. What did the turkey do? <laughs> there was a man who lived in Chicago, and he called his son who lived in New York City, and he called and talked to him on the day before Thanksgiving, and he said, son, I don't want to ruin your Thanksgiving, but your mother and I are going to divorce. 45 years with her is misery enough. Pop, what's this all about? The son screamed. We can't stand the sight of each other any longer, boy. And we're sick of each other. I'm sick of talking about this. So you call your sister in Dallas and tell her that we're getting divorced. The son was beside himself. He couldn't believe what his dad said, so he called his sister yelling at her. Says, Mom and Dad are getting a divorce. They can't stand each other. Well, she said, well, like heck, they're going to get divorced. I'll take care of this. And she called Chicago immediately and screamed at her dad. You're not going to get divorced, dad. Don't you and mom do anything until I get there. I'm calling my brother back and we're both going to be coming to talk to you tomorrow. Until then, dad, don't do a thing do you hear me? The old man hung up the phone and he turned to his wife and he said, okay, hon, they are coming for Thanksgiving and they're paying their own way. Yeah. 
How true. <laughs> oh, boy. This Thursday, we're going to be sitting at a table drinking the finest drinks, carbonated, and eating the finest food in America. We really are. We have nice homes, we have nice cars, nice jobs, we have medical care. And when we stop and think about it, there's so many good things that we should thank God for this morning. When we think about all the things that we have, we also need to think about the things that we don't have. Those 102 pilgrims who first settled at what we call Plymouth Rock were unprepared for what lie ahead. 52 of those 102 men, women, and children died from a cold, malnutrition, and the flu, along with other diseases. That happened the very first winter they were there. They had no homes and no government agency to help them build their homes. You know, I'm thankful for uh, the tower to tower. I understand that they built 157 homes that they gave to the veterans and it's all paid for. Praise God. Those people put themselves at risk and almost lost their lives. Some lost limbs. But back then, there wasn't any government. There was no agency that they could get a hold of to help them build a home for themselves. They had no means of transportation. They didn't even have horses or donkeys. Their transportation was their legs. The, the only food came from the ocean and the forest. And they had to get it for themselves. They had to go out and get that food. They had no money. And if they did, there wasn't any place to spend it. They had no amusements except for what they made for themselves. You remember seeing the... Um, the painting where this little kid, along with some others, is they're going down the street, and he has this wheel. That was their entertainment. Boy, today we have all of the entertainment in the world just about 60 miles down the road from us. They had no way to communicate. They didn't know how to get in touch with their friends and relatives that were in England. Those people really never saw their family in England again. Every family had to build their own home. They had to build their own furniture. There was no such thing back then as Social Security or Medicare. There were no hospitals. There were no real doctors amongst them. But guess what? They were still thankful. Thankful are we. I'd like you to take your Bibles, if you would, or your tablets or your phone and turn with me to Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. We had some good songs this morning. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise be give thanks to him and praise his name for the lord is good and his love endures for a couple of years none does it. forever forever 
His faithfulness continues through all generations. Wow, what Thanksgiving that is. Then if you would take a look at chapter 103, just cross the page and the first five verses here. He begins by saying, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost part beings, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems you, your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things. Ronnie, can you turn that down just a little? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm. We're to praise him today. We're to praise him tomorrow. We're to praise him 365 days a year and to be thankful for what he has done. I talked to Bill earlier this week and uh, you know, he said th there were things that were unexpected that were taking place in their lives and they were experiencing things that they never thought they would. They were on vacation. And yet he said, you know, even the things that we didn't like happening to us, we need to give thanks to God. And you know, that's exactly right. Sometimes we say, oh, praise God, I got a new car. Praise God, I got a beautiful house. Praise God, uh, my health is great. What about the times when things aren't so good? What about those times when things are going down the tubes as you think they are? And are you able to give thanks then? That's when it's important to remember that Thanksgiving is something that is not influenced by the situation you find yourself in. But Thanksgiving needs to be a part of your personality, a part of your character. This is a Psalm of Thanksgiving, Psalm 100, 103. In this psalm, there are four thanksgiving commands. The first one, it says in verse one, make a joyful what? Okay. Christians have a reason to be joyful. We've been saved, folks. Saved from our own sins. Saved from that which would condemn us to a pit in hell. We are going there. The instant we die, we're with the Lord. I was thinking of Charlie. Charlie died a week and a half ago. He was a great guy. Busy in this church all the time. Doing something for the Lord. We are to be thankful, folks, for what God has done for us. Make a joyful noise. The guilt of our sin has been forgiven and taken away. Psalm 35, 9. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. Delight in it. Praise him for it. The first command is make a joyful noise. The second one is this. Serve the Lord with what? We have several people that do various things in our church, from cleaning the sanctuary to cleaning the fellowship hall, cleaning the two sides, taking care of the outside, whatever it happens to be. Take care of the uh, Barnabas house or take care of the faith center and back. Somebody is always doing something during the week to make sure that it's clean and presentable for you and me. You probably don't even know who those people are. They do it behind the scenes when nobody's around to give them a, cat, a clap or hit them on the back, of the back of the head or whatever. There's to be thankful for those people. They make it clean for you and for me. So here we find, serve the Lord with gladness. 
I don't hear any of those people griping and complaining while they're cleaning. Every once in a while, they change positions as to what they clean, and we have two bathrooms. And I know that the ladies that go in there don't gripe and complain. You know what they do? They clean the toilets and the floor. Don't say a thing, they go ahead and do it. Gladness, folks, when you are about to do these things. We have a man in our church, uh, where is he? He takes care of the filters in our in our furnaces and air conditioners. I never hear anything to him griping and complaining about it either. God says, serve the Lord with gladness. You lose the blessing if you do it any other way. We are to serve the Lord and minister to others. Every Christian, every one of us is supposed to be a servant. First Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Salvation, being saved, trusting Christ as your Savior. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must, well, here we go, must prove faithful. And then over in Hebrews chapter 10, he also tells us that we're not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting, encouraging one another as we see the last day, capital D, approaching. I honestly believe we are living in the last days. I really do. God is working out his plan, and you and I as born-again Christians are a part of that. He has given us a trust, and he wants us to prove to be faithful to him in all things. It's a privilege to serve the Lord, folks. We should thank him every day, and we have the opportunity to do so. Something for him and do it with gladness. The third thing is this. The third command. Come before his presence with what? Singing. All right. Now, I've heard some of you say, and I understand why you're not singing, okay? But let me say this too. There is no such thing as a person not being able to sing. No such thing. Every one of us in here is capable of singing to the Lord. I'm not talking about pitch. I'm not talking about how well your singing is and how it sounds to the human ear. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about singing that comes from the heart. It comes from the heart. Every one of us can do that. And for those of you who can't sing on pitch, do it quietly, please. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 19 and 20, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your, what? In your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love singing. Earlier in my ministry here, I did a lot of it. And before I was here as your pastor, I, I was part of a Southern Gospel quartet. We traveled from Virginia all the way to Illinois. Stopped to churches on the way, stopped to churches coming back. We sang, I sang, I sang bass. God was good to me. 
Well, the problem is, as I've gotten older, it's more difficult for me to sing. And I want to sing on key. I want to do it right. So one of these days, I'm going to surprise you, okay? And we'll see what happens then. Just don't tell me how I sound it, all right? I would appreciate that. Look again at these three commands. God is saying, I want you to be happy. We talked about happiness three weeks ago. You have a choice. You can come in here as a grouch or you can come in here being happy. That's your choice. But then don't go after everybody else because they're happy and you're a grouch. You need to get your life right with God. He tells us that we're to be happy to make a joyful noise to serve with gladness and come with a joyful spirit. Did you enter the church this morning with a joyful spirit? Think about that. Did you come with the attitude of praise? Now the fourth commandment, enter his gates with thanksgiving. There it is. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Those go along together. Give thanks to him and praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. That's what we're supposed to do. All the Old Testament saints, now listen to me. All the Old Testament saints were required to come to the house of the Lord. Required. And there were certain stipulations and rules that if you don't come to the temple, you were in trouble. And you would pay the price. The first settlers for the United States, you know what's, what most of them built first? The church. They built the church, then they built their homes, then they built their businesses. But the church was number one in their life. Why? Because they knew the importance of praise and thanksgiving. Psalm 135, verses 1, to praise the name of the Lord. Huh. What are we doing? I hope we're praising God. Praise Him, you servants of the Lord, you who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. That's what we're doing. The Old Testament temple was a dwelling place for the Lord. When people came to the temple and entered into the courtroom, they knew that they had come into the presence of God. When you came in those doors, one, one or the other, I hope that you were able to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in here, unlike outside because this is where God is right now he's not outside he's here he's here with you and with me and we're to give thanks for that the command to enter his gates is the same today as it was in Old Testament times take some time on Thanksgiving to read Psalm 100 to those who are gathered around your table being thankful is also a choice. When we fail to be thankful, you know what? We have been influenced by Satan himself and the wrong choice has been made by you. When you know that you should be thankful and you're not, Satan's dealing with your life right then. Don't let that happen to you on Thursday. Thanksgiving Day. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, if you're not sure that when you die you're going to go to heaven to be with the Lord, if you're not sure of that, my friend, you need to come and let us show you through the Word of God how you can be saved, how you can know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, heaven is your home. You need to come. Don't leave here the same way as you came in here, even as a Christian. 
If God is speaking to your heart, you need to quit procrastinating. You need to come. Come and kneel and pray, seeking God's face. Come and let him show you through God's word how you can trust in Christ as your Savior. That's what it's all about. Thank God he gives us a clear message as to how heaven can be our home, how you can be forgiven of your sin. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, you've been good to us this morning. Thank you for the folks who shared in a testimony time of how they are thankful. And Father, we come now to the invitation. Now it's their choice. A choice that if you're speaking to them, they need to come. Not procrastinate, not wait for a better time. There will never be a better time than right now. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.